So I have something really cool to show everyone here on the YouTube channel today. I'm gonna to bring you over to our hammer mill and show you what we've been working on. Dustin Carpenter, he does all the awesome stuff on my farm here. He has a welding truck, mechanical background. So whenever we need something really unique, he always is interested to do it. He designed our greenhouse frames. He designed our uh, our vice mount for our, uh, for our vice. We've done some custom shelving with him and then he does all the repairs on our farm. Any, anything we need for welding or mechanical, he's, he's always working on our, on our equipment like our, our forklift and our tractor, stuff like that. So I'm gonna bring you over to the mill. I wanna show you our pulley drive system today. And what I wanna go over is what we've designed and, and the problems we've encountered. So what we're gonna do to fix that. But before we get into this video, uh, I wanna bring you into Greenhouse 3. I'm gonna show you an awesome crop of Piapino mushrooms. We've been developing te techniques and strategies with a couple specific strains. This strain happens to come from Cap and Stem out of Portland, Maine. This is a uh, really pr uh, awesome producing commercial Piapino mushroom strain. So we're gonna go over the details on, on how to refine the growing techniques with this and what we've discovered. But before we get into that, I wanted to let everyone know that we've extended our mentorship super early bird for another month. So you have until the end of September, if you're interested in taking our course, we're doing a super early bird discount where we take $1,000 off and you get to come for our 2024 season, just be a part of the farm and have a lot of fun. We've been doing this for a long time. Now, what we've noticed is over the last year, and it's really just the economy to blame with how things are expensive, people aren't traveling as much, they're just tightening down. We just haven't had as much students booking. So we wanted to extend that that super early bird for another month to give anyone a chance that really wants to come. But I also wanted to just kind of kick it up a notch on this YouTube channel. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking about taking our course and you want to book our super early bird, we're going to take an additional $200 off tuition. So we'll take $1,200 off of our tuition for the 2024 season and you have until the end of September if that opportunity interests you. So I'm just gonna bring you in this greenhouse and I wanna show you our crop of Piapino. We've been working on developing techniques and strategies with specific strains over the years. Years ago, I was working with a strain that was really weak and it was prone to black mold. And it's really just because the mycelium was struggling and it would just die and then we'd have problems in the lab and then by the time we got into the substrate, it just didn't take. So over the years, we kind of heard that Cap and Stem had an awesome strain of Piapino, so we got our hands on that. And last year we did a, did a run, really stoked with the way it produced. So then this year we, uh, we, we thought we'd kind of double down. We'd, we've been doing, bigger crops throughout the last maybe six weeks and we've what we've noticed with with warmer temperatures because we're doing an h cut we expose a lot of the substrate it does dry out and then you're going to have problems with with fruiting and you're going to get sporadic fruiting lighter colors and not big clusters so this specific strain really does thrive in um, like the 15 to 20 celsius range on the low end i would say 8 to 10 celsius up to maybe 29 30 celsius if uh if it's fruiting and then we got a heat spike it's going to be able to handle it it's just to get initiate that nice cluster of pinning you really do need i would say around like 18 20 celsius and that's ideal so we're going to be growing this strain in september and we'll be doing some research next year with uh probably like april may we do get fluctuating temperatures in may where it can get warmer so we'll, we'll kind of be take it easy i think We've been, I've talked on this YouTube channel where we're kind of getting away from doing a lot of the interesting specialty varieties and more focusing on oyster mushrooms that are going to produce because we've collected so many different varieties of oyster that we can still have uh, a lot of different variety and, and we can actually scale the farm a lot easier and then not have to worry about these fluctuations. But when the weather's right, like it is right now, the, the mushrooms are so beautiful.
you can see we do a, an H cut. And they're just starting to pop out there. A little bit dark in the greenhouse right now. We're just coming to around 7 o'clock at night. But I think you can get the idea of what these look like. I'll take one of these blocks out and I'll show you. So really nice clustering. We do an H cut so it pops out. And we just leave the bag in and it's going to produce a second flush and it'll start producing around the sides of the plastic where the mycelium is not ex as exposed. So this is something that we've been working on for a long time and really stoked to see a nice crop. So this is the second wave of Piapino that we've been running over the last uh, 10 days or so and we're going to be putting more in uh, we already put some in the other greenhouse last week and we'll be putting some more in next week so we have a nice wave and this is really looking good this is a an alternative to chestnut mushroom chestnut takes about uh, I want to say seven weeks in the lab it needs to uh, the mycelium needs to kind of get an orangey yellow coloration before it's ready to pin and fruit mushrooms so that that takes about seven weeks from inoculation and then we actually don't get our first crop usually for about I want to say 25 to 28 days this Piapino is is at the point where you see in the greenhouse right now it probably takes about 10 days so in the lab incubation maybe five weeks so we're cutting down at least two weeks in incubation for the Piapino and we're cutting down at least 10 to 15 days on our first crop in the greenhouse when we're harvesting so this mushroom is definitely something we're looking to transition more into but I will say that maybe chestnut is a little bit more heat tolerant than Piapino so I just want to bring you over to the hammer mill so I'm gonna walk you over there right now just show you what we're working on So the new setup, we're going to kind of back in the tractor and run the PTO. This is a Kubota. And then if we're just we're going to run the PTO, it's just pressing this down and turning it. And that'll engage this PTO. And we take this cover off. So we have uh, these grooves that are going to connect into this bar. This is a PTO shaft which then connects to our hammer mill. So this is going to run and it's going to turn these pulleys. So what we've what we've done is we've taken the motor out and we put this pulley system and it's it's quite ingenious. Dustin he's uh, he's welded these nuts that we can then he, we can use a ratchet and just kind of move the machine to to tighten the pulleys and then once we have that tight we have these mounts that we uh, we can screw and bolt or we can bolt right onto the frame and have it in position so that we're not like pulling pulling it apart to kind of make it make it tight so this is a really ingenious tightening design that I I, I noticed right away when Dustin put this on here problem that we're having right now is is this actually is not turning the machine fast enough so we're actually chipping because it's not spinning as fast as it did with the motor we're chipping a real chunky sawdust and we're looking for that to be a little bit finer we also noticed I'll bring you around the other side so there's a feed chute or I guess you'd call this like a drop chute where you're getting airflow through here and you're going to get excess chips that that kind of fall but eventually they're forced through this fan and then this comes up and through this cyclone chute but if there's not enough if, if the flails in here are not turning fast enough the vacuum's not strong enough and we were noticing that these wood chips were we're almost like getting to the point where they're going to clog and then that's going to clog the machine, this uh, screen that's inside here, you guys can see there, the screen in there will eventually, the, 
the sawdust will get to the point where it fills and then we're just everything's going to get clogged in the machine and then it's not going to run properly so we need to speed this up and the only way to do it is we have to increase the size of this pulley and we're going to decrease the size of this pulley and we're going to probably bring it a little closer and still use this belt and this is going to allow us to speed it up so that's something that we're looking to do right now and then we're just going to have to cut this off and re-weld re a new pulley we've also uh, switched over to this triple belt years ago and on the new belt that Dustin put together he just put a bunch of these smaller ones and they actually flip over as it's turning over so we're going to source a triple belt for this as well and then there's quite a bit of debris so I'm going to build some kind of box that goes over here just to keep the dust off of the uh, the belts but no this is pretty pretty basic and it works great we're able to we're able to use the machine that we've had for about six years now and we're give it some new life but what's really cool is that this old machine i'll bring you over here it uh it rattled quite a bit so with that a lot of parts would fall off and i'd have to pay dustin a lot of money to re-weld things and problem solve and fix this machine <clears throat> so we we have this muffler that we just kind of put together it came with a little muffler that eventually just fell off so then we got this thing but then it rattled too much we had to put a little bar here this is our coolant tank and all the dust would come up and fill the coolant tanks we had to build this little contraption so that the, the sawdust wouldn't be able to get in and the coolant uh, vapor steam could exhaust out the bottom here we have a little we had to design this little air filter but like ev everything because this rattles so much all these all these contact points that are welded they can come loose and it's problematic so what's really surprising about this machine that that we built it's, it's super quiet so the tractor we're actually going to run up to 3000 rpms and the machine itself is is really quiet and and nothing can really break i'd say the only negative thing about this is that we're going to maybe put more hours on our tractor but honestly we don't use it that much we use it to mix compost move a few things around so i think it's i think it's a good solution to bring this back to life and uh, we save a lot of money and we'll we'll still be able to use Thor's wood. So if you guys don't know, we uh, we actually recycle uh, urban wood that is sourced from uh, from areas around the Okanagan. And my business partner he manages Bartlett Tree Experts. So Bartlett hooks us up with fresh local wood, and we we use like maple, elm, tree of heaven, like invasive species, poplar, birch. Uh, anything that is usable in mushroom cultivation hardwood easily digestible by the mushrooms we're gonna we're gonna definitely take advantage of and we can chip that here into sawdust so this allows us to keep doing that we uh, we've been running the farm on pellets all year from canadian tire because this has been at a commission for about four months so you know it's it's nice to get this back into action you know it, it's it's been interesting with pellets we uh we can we can do production a lot faster in terms of we don't have to process the material and it's just a couple scoops and if we were to get a bagging machine we could automate it a lot faster but there is more of an expense to to buying the pellets all the time and they do take longer to grow in the lab so you know it's, it's an interesting way to look at it you know which which material is better and i think they both have their purpose but we uh we can fit more pounds of substrate in our sterilizer with the sawdust we don't have to worry about the expansion so our bins they i'll, I'll bring you over i'll show you really quick our bins are we do these plastic sterilizers and i'll be doing a video on on how we've designed them i just haven't done it yet but what's really interesting is that with the pelletized materials they expand and then they can warp the bin and and that's that's bad right because we want to we want to prolong the shelf life of these bins so we've designed these sterilizers and these are all the pelletized materials but if we if we pack it too tightly they'll just bow out so we can only fit uh, 
we, we still do like the 138 bags, but we can only do five pound bags with pelletized materials. With Thor's wood chips that we turn into sawdust, we're doing six pound bags and still doing the 138. So we can do more pounds of substrate in these bins with, with uh, w using that hammer mill. And we can actually speed up colonization in the lab because there's more air spaces in the bags. So they, uh, they're not as dense. The mycelium can uh, colonize and, and freely move around in the bag a lot easier. So I, I would say advantages to both, but super stoked to be on the path to getting our mill working again. So I'll keep you updated on this YouTube channel once we do that. Uh, just a couple of modifications and we should have it up and running. Definitely it's working. So a really cool design and I want to just to thank Dustin Carpenter on the YouTube channel here for really uh, thinking outside the box and coming to our aid when we needed you. We, uh, we definitely appreciate everything you've done on our farm. So anyways, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully there's a few things that have inspired you and obviously if, if you have any questions, I'm always open to emails. Happy to, uh, to help anyone get to where they need to be on their mushroom journey. All right, we'll see you in the next one.